Hi, it's Grandma Michelle again, and it's January 17th still. And I'm in Best Buy, and Ronnie is taking my movie camera. He's 23 years old, good looking guy, working hard here. And he reminded me of another story that was important to say. When I was with the homeless this past Sunday, January 15th, at Southeast First Avenue in Andrews, there was a, a man online, age 45. I remembered him from last year when he told me that he was going to get out of there and he was going to go up north and get his act together. But he was still there. But this time, he grew a very, very long beard. He saw me, but he would not say hello to me, and he put his head down because he was embarrassed that he was still there. No one has to be embarrassed that you're still at the place you were because you weren't ready to leave. I hope that I can get to him and help him because he does have to clean his act up again. Last year, he looked good. He was clean shaven. This year, his beard was long, trying to hide himself. You can't hide yourself. Or you can, you become the bear. You crawl into your cave, as so many men do. But it's time that you get out of the cave and think of how someone is there to help you. But you gotta take the first step. No one has fairy dust to really make things work. Things come from you inside and only you can make it work. Thank you, Ronnie. Sure. Hi, it's Grandma Michelle again. And it's still January 17th. Well, I paid my taxes, the end of my year taxes, and I felt good. But I paid them because we actually do get a lot from our government. I get library access all the time and, and free help learning computer work. Um, I great service with, with police officers, um, watching over me and taking care of me. And there's a lot of good and the roads are good and taking care of things. And we really have to think about the good stuff in life and not go into the bad stuff. Yeah, we, we can fix the bad stuff, but we really need to focus more on the good stuff. Now here's something really interesting that happened. Yesterday, I was quite tired, and I didn't go out last night, and I went to bed early, and all of a sudden there was a phone call. My mother knocked on my room, and she said, the phone is for you. Well, it was Stacy, the one that's in charge of the Ronald McDonald house. And she said that I wouldn't be able to come back to the Ronald McDonald house as planned. I was supposed to be there every other Sunday, for the length of time that I'm in Florida, which is to the end of March, because they had some animal therapists that needed to be there that was described from last year. And I said, that's fine. And she said, she'll call me when I can come again. And I said to her, you know, things work out really well because I had already committed myself to the homeless down on First Street, Southeast First Street at a park there to do some motivational speaking and to help them as an intuitive life coach. I was there this week after, actually it was before I went to the Ronald McDonald house. I was at the mission in Fort Lauderdale serving the homeless there and there I gave them my cards and told them to go onto my blog, the ones that were interested, and read my stories. And in two weeks, I would be there listening to their stories and helping them get rid of the monkey on their back or whatever it is and to move forward and to maybe have a better life for themselves. And then after that, Arnold Abbott, who runs his nonprofit that feeds these people, which is lovethyneighbor.org. He went over to the park 
on South East Street. And I said I would follow him and go over there and do the same thing there. And I did, and I went there. And I, I met wonderful people that are homeless, very bright. I walked around, I was very surprised how educated some of them are. College graduates? Now, I'm not a college graduate, and I listened to the words that they spoke to me, and I handed them my card, and I told them the same thing, that I would be there in two weeks, and I would work with them on an individual basis. And they were thrilled. And then something very unique happened to me. I saw this young woman, I would say about in her late 20s, sitting alone on her suitcase, eating the food that was given to her. And I went straight towards her, bypassing two black people leaning against a tall tree. Now, the one black woman got really upset that I bypassed her and went directly to the single woman there. And I said to her, the black woman, I said, well, she was sitting there alone, and you have your companion. So I wanted to go to her first and give her my card, and then I'll be back to you. Well, the black woman did understand, but actually was hurt. But actually, the black woman was right, because I really didn't see them. And I have to be honest, I went straight to her, the white woman. Yes, I can't, I, I'm not perfect in any which way. But then I went back to the black couple, and I spoke to them. And it was so important to listen to their stories. And listen to the older gentleman that was born the same year as me, in 1947. And when we were talking about the tree that he was leaning against, I said, the tree is alive. And he said, yes, the tree breathes. And he says, the breathing of the tree has helped him with his emphysema that he has in his chest. And he's actually able to breathe there. And I said, yes, I know. I know about the trees when I walk now, instead of being in a gym inside and doing my exercise. And the trees and the plants, everything is alive to me and breathes and gives me back an unbelievable power and an imagination in my mind to help others. And then the black woman understood, and I told her, you know I learned so much from you today, and I'll be back. And then I said, may I hug you? And she said, yes, she really needed it, and I hugged her. And to me, that was the best that I could possibly do for another human being, show them my compassion, that I really do care what's inside them, and it's not about the color. It's about them as a human being, as I as a human being. So, when Stacy told me from the Fort Lauderdale Ronald McDonald House that I would not be able to be there for a couple of weeks, I said, you know, God is great. He closed that one door, but opened these other doors for the homeless that need me a lot more because they have their cancer that's inside them. And for me, to try to help them get rid of it. The good Lord will give me the wisdom to help them. Thank you. Hi, it's Grandma Michelle, and it is January 17th, the day after Martin Luther King's day of service. Um, the 15th Sunday was his birthday, a very special day for me. Oh yeah, so of course I have my puppets with me, uh, the toy dog. Sometimes it brings cheer, and sometimes it brings a lot of hatred, actually. And then of course, the monkey. And that too, sometimes it makes people smiley happy, and then sometimes it doesn't. Now this is what happened to me yesterday in Festival Indoor Flea Market. I was having a great time there with my mother, She's turning 88 years old, and giving a day of service as a kind daughter and respecting her when walking through the flea market. Well, I had my furry animals with me, and in front of me was this man wheeling his wife in a double-wide 
wheelchair and he had a big hump on his back and he could hardly walk and I walked by and he saw me and he said oh you're full of fur you are furred up and I laughed at that that was funny and then to his wife he said thinking I didn't hear him that I am effed up and when I said to him I heard what you said he felt bad and annoyed but who was effed up him with a big hernia on his back mm -hmm. wheeling his wife in the double wide wheelchair or me being happy making people laugh mm -hmm. and dancing and put smiles on people's face mm -hmm. you know it's the life we live in today people are always judging others before they really get to know them they judge them on their color judge them on their appearance, their size, their shape. Nah, we really can't do that anymore. Now here's another thing that happened. Wonderful thing to me. I was at the Ronald McDonald's house doing my service to the children with cancer there. And there's this little lovely black boy, six years old, that's been there for two years. And then there's his brother, 11 years old. Now, his brother said to me that he had deja vu looking at my big black Cadillac and knowing me. And I thought to myself, wow, this child said this big word. Where did this come from? Did it come from something in his mind? Or did it come from something he saw on television and absorbed? I really don't know. But later on, I got to know the 11-year-old child and found out how bright he was, but also found out that kids were bullying him in the school that he was going to here in Fort Lauderdale because he was out of where he lives. And we talked about bullying, and I showed him how look in somebody's eyes and don't let them judge you and then put a stop in front. And we exchanged a way of showing them not to let anybody bully them and then go to the proper authorities when something like that happens. And I had a great day of service there because there was a woman there born the same day as me, June 18th, but she's only 45 years old. And she was born in the year 66. She was there because her grandson, six months old, was shaken by the father, and the father is now in jail. And the child is in a care facility. And she's down there every day, hoping that the child will live with some, without abnormalities and, and can focus. But I was there for her. And it was a great time that I spent giving back and letting her know whether the child lives or not, it's God's will, not ours. So she thanked me, and I had a great day from that. So I guess I got lucky. Call me the furry person or whatever you want to call me. I'm the one that's really having fun, making a difference in someone else's life. And thank you for taking this video of me. <laughs>